distal akin osteotomy. Correction of hallux valgus interphalangeus with an osteotomy of the distal end of the proximal phalanx distal akin osteotomy. This video has been produced from the article source that has been shown below. I would like to thank the author Robert van der Grend, MD, from Department of Orthopedics Rehabilitation, Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Service, Gainesville, Florida, United States of America. Citation. Van der Grend R. Correction of hallux valgus interphalangeus with an osteotomy of the distal end of the proximal phalanx, distal akin osteotomy. Foot ankle int. 2017 Feb. 38, 2, 153 to 158. Introduction. Hallux valgus interphalangeus, HVI, is a deformity of the first toe resulting from lateral deviation of the distal phalanx in relation to the proximal phalanx. As with hallux valgus, the cause of HVI is likely multifactorial. Developmental and growth plate abnormalities of the distal toe as well as pressure on the distal phalanx from shoe wear and push-off have all been suggested as causes. Hallux valgus interphalangeus can occur in combination with hallux valgus, hallux rigidus, and as an isolated deformity. Hallux valgus interphalangeus alone is rarely symptomatic, but can impinge on the second toe, contributing to second toe symptoms and deformity. Osteotomy of the proximal phalanx of the hallux has been used in the treatment of both hallux valgus and hallux valgus interphalangeus. In 1925 Akin described realignment of the first toe with a medial closing wedge osteotomy at the base of the proximal phalanx. This osteotomy is still used in combination with other hallux valgus correction procedures to achieve additional correction of the alignment of the proximal phalanx and is also used for the correction of hallux valgus interphalangeus. Operative technique. The intent of the osteotomy was to realign the toe clinically and correct the HVIA to neutral. A dorsal midline incision was used beginning at the level of the interphalangeal joint and extended proximally about 2 cm. The fascia over the extensor hallucis longus, EHL, tendon was divided longitudinally. The EHL was retracted laterally. The periosteum was elevated from the dorsal and medial surfaces of the phalanx. The dorsal capsule of the IP joint extended proximally about 1 cm from the articular surface and was left intact. Retraction for performing the osteotomy was done with small handheld retractors, as Homan type retractors and self retaining retractors stretch the soft tissues and block access to the bone with the oscillating saw through this small incision. The distal limb of the osteotomy was marked along the proximal edge of the dorsal capsule about 1 cm proximal and parallel to the articular surface, leaving the lateral cortex intact. The proximal limb was marked at the desired angle of correction, also leaving the lateral cortex intact. Figure. When making the cuts, the thickness of the saw blade should be considered and the cut should be made on or inside the planned lines to avoid removing too much bone. Observation during the course of this study showed that the length of the medial wedge can be estimated at about 3 mm per 10 degrees of desired correction. The cortical bone at this location was thick and the working space was small, so it can be difficult to tell when the plantar cortex has been cut with the saw. To avoid injury to the FHL and the adjacent neurovascular bundles, both limbs of the osteotomy were cut, leaving the lateral cortex intact, about two-thirds of the anteroposterior diameter of the bone. This dorsal wedge-shaped fragment was removed with a small curette. The remaining wedge of medial and plantar cortex was then easy to see and the osteotomy was completed. A curette or freer was used to ensure that the wedge was properly cleared so that there would be uniform contact when the osteotomy was closed. If additional varus correction was needed, the osteotomy was held loosely closed and the oscillating saw was used to make a cut through the osteotomy site, kerf cut, for about three-fourths of the width of the bone. Fixation was achieved with two acutrac headless screw placed from the distal and proximal side of the osteotomy side through the osteotomy line to achieve compression. Intraoperative radiographs were obtained using the mini C-arm. Figure. 
Rotation of the distal toe could also be corrected, if needed, by cutting, or breaking, the lateral cortex but this makes the osteotomy more unstable, and fixation with two pins is recommended. The fascia was approximated over the EHL and the skin was closed with nylon sutures. The pins were left in place for four weeks and then removed in the office. The aftercare required by the associated forefoot procedures determined the weight-bearing status and the need for additional immobilization. Follow-up varied according to the associated procedures and with the time to resolution of each patient's problems. The minimum clinical follow-up time was four months. Notice the pre-operative and post-operative appearance of the first toe. Notice the pre-operative and post-operative appearance of the first toe. Notice the pre-operative and post-operative radiograph of the case. Notice the pre-operative and post-operative radiograph of the case. This video has been produced from the article source that has been shown below. I would like to thank the author Robert van der Grend, MD from Department of Orthopedics Rehabilitation, Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Service, Gainesville, Florida, United States of America. Citation. Van der Grend R. Correction of Hallux valgus interphalangeus with an osteotomy of the distal end of the proximal phalanx, distal akin osteotomy. Foot ankle int. 2017 Feb. 38, 2, 153-158. Thanks for watching subscribe my YouTube channel.